Hello, everybody. It is I, Mr. Chuck. Wait, that's not my intro anymore. Let's start that again. Hello, everybody. My name is Kranatoko, but you probably already knew that. Star Wars The Old Republic. That's it. That's the video. See you later, everybody. As some of you may know, I built my channel around this video game. I played it just prior to its release when it was still in beta, and I played so much of it that sometimes I tried to build my real life work hours around content releases. I recorded a lot of footage for it. Across my channel, I wouldn't be surprised if I have over 1,000 hours of videos for you to enjoy. <laughs> then, I stopped playing. Things in life got crazy, my PC was basically one video away from combusting, and... Thanks, car. My PC was basically one video away from combusting, and... The cars like to keep passing whenever I'm trying to say that line. And... That was that. Now, one pandemic later, I've decided to come back for one night only. Maybe, who knows, we'll see how this video does. However, for now, I'm not returning as an existing player. I'm returning as a new player. Let me explain. According to my YouTube channel, the last time I properly played Star Wars The Old Republic, was November 2017, almost four years ago. Suffice to say, I imagine a lot will have changed since then. I also need a bit of a refresher upon trying to start up playing the game on and off. So what better way to do this than to create a brand new account and see how the game holds up. Essentially, I'm going to start a new playthrough and see what the starting experience would be like for a brand new player. So let's not waste any more time. Okay, so we've created our account, SWOTOR is downloaded, so now it's time to play! Oh. Uh, not the sort of colour scheme I would expect for a video game set in the vast dark space, but okay. Anyway, I've restarted the game and now it appears to be working as normal. So first off, we need to choose our server. There's not many options. However, I am English and live in Europe. Yes, the UK is still in Europe. The EU and Europe are two different things, you dummies. So Darth Malchus it is. Now it's time to choose my allegiance. Do I go Republic or Empire? Well, my original first SWOTOR character was a Sith warrior on the Empire side. So I think I'll just do that again and see what might be different. Next, we need to start creating our character, of which there are eight different subclasses for the Empire side. Interestingly, if you wish to, you can read a ton of lore surrounding your character's class. Completely optional, but it's some nice little detailing. I guess, as a new player, I would be very confused about combat proficiencies. In fact, scratch that, I am very confused. I mean, it's all well and good to show me the names of some abilities I may encounter, but... As of right now, this just means nothing to me, so why bother showing it to me? I've chosen the Sith Marauder, naturally, and now I just need to pick my race. And am I going crazy, or weren't there a lot more races you could choose to be that were previously unlocked? Have they now locked some of these behind paywalls? Please someone tell me that's just me being crazy, or have they actually done that? Ooh, I've opened the store. A... Bunch of stuff I could choose to buy. I don't know why, as a new player, you'd want to buy anything other than possibly the subscription time at this point. But, you know, maybe you want to go all in. It's not up to me, it's up to you. And we've made our character. Totally doesn't resemble any other characters in the game. Definitely not one's named Granite, okay. You know, the hardest part about starting any new MMO is choosing your username. I obviously can't go with Kranitoko because, well, I already have a character by that name on this very server. Kranitoso, maybe? Oh, nice, it works. You know what I should have done? I should have swapped the T and the K around and gone with Kranikoto. Oh, well, I can't be bothered to change it now. Copy, copyright music, copyright music, I will mute this. Wait, hold on. These cutscenes never used to pan. And Overseer Tremel never used to come and meet you. They're... They're changing the law! <laughs> no, but seriously, it's actually kind of amazing how much a camera pan can make something seem more cinematic. It really makes a difference. I'll feed them their heads. 
Once you acquire the war blade, I suggest you spend some time in the tomb bloodying it. Then come to me in my chambers in the academy. Yeah, you tell him, Kranatoso. What the heck is this? Okay, so this is a lot to unpack. Well, first of all, let's get rid of this flashing icon. Nothing more annoying than something that's constantly flashing. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of... Okay, ignoring that and going straight to the world map. It's kind of baffling that the game has something flashing or even not greyed out that you can't even access until you get a ship, which you won't be getting until you're about, what, level 15? So for the entire time, I've just got to put it with an icon flashing. I mean, it may not seem like a big deal, but it is for me. Okay, let's take a look at this to the left of the screen. I've hardly played the game yet, but I'm curious to know what all this stuff is. Right, so from what I can tell, Galactic Seasons, I assume, I'm just going by what I see, is a battle pass? I mean, that makes sense. Pretty much every single EA game has some sort of battle pass, so it was only a matter of time before SWOTOR got one. You've got login rewards, which is a nice incentive to log in. You've got all of these buttons, which I haven't a clue what they do. I assume the game will eventually tell me. It's just overall a lot of information for a new player. On the plus side, at least they have a tutorial. Hopefully it won't just boggle me with so much information over a small period of time. <coughs> also, what's this? There's like nothing there. Is something supposed to go there eventually? Cool, I've sorted out my abilities. Not sure if this is the right order for them. And away we go. First up, we've got some mail to open. We've got ourselves a title and some cosmetic gear. I've put the gear on and now I want to hide my helmet, which I cannot do unless I pay for it. Okay, I mean, I'm sure it doesn't cost that much, right? Maybe. 50p worth of cartel coins? Okay, so 280 coins and you can buy 250 coins for £1.79 or 450 for 2 99 So I have to spend like £1.20 more in order to get the full 280 coins to do this. But on the plus side, I'd have 170 coins remaining to do something with. This is always something I hated about EA's microtransactions, and honestly, I guess microtransactions in general. Apex Legends does this too, and I play Apex Legends a lot. They price their cosmetics just slightly higher than the, I don't know, currency bundles that they have on sale. So you're usually forced to spend more just to get the thing you want. It's just... <sighs> I hate it. I really hate it. It's so stupid. It's it's scummy. But hey. That's video games these days. Let's go kill some stuff. Rawr! Okay, so killing them was pretty easy, but that's a good thing as you want to try and ease players into the game. Level 2, and we have something else flashing. This time for your combat proficiencies where unlike the character creation screen, you actually have some detailed information on what something does. I'm gonna pick Fury. We have another tutorial and another tutorial. Since we're level two, we have some new abilities to get. And of course, if I want to get sprint early, I have to subscribe. Fine, I guess. Woohoo, we got ourselves an achievement. One thing I always love is achievements. And if I remember correctly, Swotor has a lot of them. I do like the way achievements are set up in SWOTOR. It looks clean and all laid out, even if it, too, seems like a lot to process. However, compared to, say, the Elder Scrolls Online's achievement list, which is just exhausting to go through, this is a lot nicer. We've got another tutorial for difficulty modes on an expansion I can't play until I beat my class story anyway. So not sure why it's telling me now. Another tutorial? On social points. Yay. Okay, so I've just completed a side mission and noticed that I got dark side points. Now, I know that I just got this passively for having dark side set in the bottom left section. But I'm sure for a new player, this might seem confusing. 
especially since I made no dark side choices in this side quest. They seem to give you tutorials for things you don't need to know about yet, and not for ones you do need to know. Another tutorial, another tutorial, and another tutorial. I'm not even level 4 yet and I just feel like I've been swamped with tutorials. I mean don't get me wrong, I can understand why the game does this. A player clicks on something and may be curious to know more about it, but maybe, I, I don't know, just grey the clickable thing out until they actually encounter the feature for the first time in game. Like followers. I don't need to know about that until I get my first companion, which won't be until near the end of the Korriban story. I just feel like that there's a lot Bioware could just nip and tuck, you know? Now, let me get something out of the way. You're probably thinking, Cran, you're just complaining a lot. And that's true. If you want a game to improve, you've got to point out its flaws. Despite that, Swotor still has a lot of upsides. I personally like the aesthetic to the game, the cinematic feel, the engaging stories, the combat. There's just some neat gimmicks to the game too, which I know don't come out until much later in the game, but they're still fun. I still like and liked Swotor back in the day when I was playing it, and maybe I'll start liking it again when I get back into it. Okay, so we've got the blade, time to head out of here, and it's never that simple. I mean, I guess I could just run for it. What could go wrong? Ah. Well. Now, at least respawning isn't punishing, gotta be thankful for that. And here we are at the Sith Academy, yes you will bow down to me. Oh yes, I suppose I should check out the cartel market. Well, it certainly looks cleaner than I remember. What's this weapon tuning that costs 1800 cartel coins? Goodness, that's like 10 pound, right? Um, I don't see a difference. I mean, I guess it might make an actual difference on a proper blaster or lightsaber. That's not a starter weapon, but this would just confuse a new player. Also, hold on, 3,800 cartel coins for the HK-55 mission? Isn't this just like an hour long? I'd have to spend £24 to afford this mission and to have 1,700 coins remaining. Jesus, did I pay that back in the day? Then again, I do spend a lot of money on skins and Apex. I have probably spent well over £1,000 in Apex. So, okay, big guy, you're toast. Wow, you're pretty quick for a big beast. But it's no problem for me. <laughs> but, oh yeah, Galactic Starfighter. Now, here's the thing. Back when I was a regular player, all of this information just confused the heck out of me. It still does, so who knows what a new player might think. Perhaps this screen just needs to be a little more simplified, I don't know. Ah, Darth Barris, I remember you well. No, spoilers of course if you're a new player, but let's just say he's a big part of the Sith Warrior story and you'll get to know him very well. Okay, so one final thing before we wrap up the video, I've seemingly found a workaround to hiding my helmet slot. The game gives you a free outfit to use for your transmogging and if I just create my outfit and choose not to include my helmet, then there, I've managed to hide my helmet for free. Sure, it costs a few credits, but it beats spending real money. So let's stop here for now. Perhaps I'll do another video, especially since I know we've got a few more upcoming features, such as companions, your ship, and even the Imperial fleet. So if you'd like a part two, let me know in the comments. Or hey, press that like button so I know you enjoyed this video. I know I seemed quite critical, but as mentioned, I was sort of coming at this as if I was a new player and what they might think. And of course, you don't want to overload your new player with so much, which I do feel this game does quite a bit. But there's enough here to still keep the player engaged, I think. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe for more upcoming content. I'll probably have more SWOTOR videos in the future, just not in the way you might have been used to before. Thank you very much for watching, and a bye bye.